Hey, we're Story Phantom, and despite what some people think, this is a rant. It's not a rant. It's a rant. Mm-hmm. It qualifies as a rant mm-hmm. or a discussion. Discussion, but discussionly rant. rant. Uh-uh. We're ranting in our discussions. Uh-uh. We're here to talk about Doctor Who, episode uh, seven, seven, which was called "Can You Hear Me?" Yep. And something that bugged both of us. Yep. But it's not something in the episode that bugged us. It's something with everyone else that bugged us. Am I telling the whole story here or are you chiming in? Go ahead. Okay. So, in the episode, they were dealing I'll with... I'll chime in when we actually talk about what we think. With what we were talking about, you know... Oh, when I feel like interrupting you. We were talking... The entire episode was kind of focusing on fear and you know, nightmares and, and mental health and everything like that. Um, and in the episode, towards the end, Graham confides in the doctor his fear of his cancer coming back. Mm-hmm. You know, and how he's not really sure what he should be doing. And she responds with, uh, this is the power to say something, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know what to say. So I'm so going to go ahead and go away. to my <laughs> council here. And a couple minutes from now, I'll finally think of the right thing to say. And it was played off as a laugh. I mean, in our reaction, we chuckled. And then it cuts over to um, to Ryan and Yaz talking about their own fears. And then that's it. And the doctor, Jody, and Dr. Who in general got a lot of crap over this. Because people were saying, well, the doctor didn't do anything. She didn't say she anything. She wasn't empathetic. She didn't care. She laughed it off. Nobody cared. And there you go. That's what people were reacting to. And while it was certainly played as a joke, I think it... Especially because they said, they, they explained the reasoning for it, right? Yeah. Your reasoning is probably, your reasoning for not having a problem with it is probably different than mine. But in the article I read, where it was uh, a comment by Chibnall, I believe, uh, he said that um, sometimes people don't necessarily know what to say in those kind of situations. And... Seeing as the doctor is an alien, she didn't know what to say in that moment. So it wasn't to brush him off. It was because some people don't know what to say. And that was a shout out, kind of, well, not a shout out, but it was an acknowledgement of the fact that sometimes there's no perfect thing to say. And sometimes people don't know what to say when people come to them with problems. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter. It just means that their feeling of not knowing what to say or not knowing the right thing to say is just as valid as the feeling of being afraid of what Graham was afraid of. Which it is. A lot of people don't know what to say in those kind of situations. Someone comes to you with a problem and sometimes you don't know what to say. I've been through different kinds of trainings and different classes and things like that uh, um, to know what to say when people are in crisis and I still have those times where I don't know what to say especially if it's like a family member or someone I care about I don't want to just give them the things that I've been taught I want to be able to say the perfect thing for that person in particular but it's hard for me and I'm not socially awkward in the least I don't believe I'm able to fake it till I make it <laughs> pretty well. And yet, I will have those moments a lot, especially with one person in particular comes to mind. I'm not going to say who they are, but when they're having a problem or they're in a different state than what they normally are, I don't know what to say. I don't want to call them out on it. I don't want to say the wrong thing because I'm afraid to make it worse. And it's just, it's a very difficult situation for me to be in because it's someone that I love dearly and I'm just like I don't know how to handle this so sometimes it may be the wrong thing to do but sometimes it feels like I just let it be which is what the doctor did here because she didn't know what to say and a lot of people will judge that but say someone you love say your father comes up to you and He's acting differently and you can tell he's acting differently and you don't know what to say because you don't want to point it out because what if you're wrong or what if you pointing it out makes it worse or what if you pointing it out makes him upset or hurts him in some way and it actually has the opposite effect than what you want it to. You don't know. 
I mean, there are situations where you have to say something, but there are situations where it's impossible to say something or it feels like it is. And there are situations where you just don't know what to say, but you want to say something. She wanted to say something. She didn't know what to say, so she just let what she was thinking at that moment come out. And she's an alien. She's not human. She doesn't have the same kind of feelings that we do. Not all the time, anyway. She's not perfect. And nobody's perfect. And I know a lot of people who probably wouldn't have known what to say to Graham in that moment. Just because the doctor is supposed to be this super person who saves everybody and everybody ends up happy in the end doesn't mean that she's always going to know the right thing to say or do. First things first. You're talking about me here? Is this me? Okay. You sure? I'm 100% sure. Okay. I can say one word that'll tell you who, but... I'd rather no, not. that's fine. But um, I get what you're saying. Although, when you get in like your really depressed state, and I don't know what to say because I want to help you, I can't because it feels for us okay. Like in our particular situation, I suffer from depression and anxiety. He suffers from depression and. I deal with mine in a different way than he does. And Mine's unhealthy, but... <laughs> neither is mine, particularly. Um, but I don't always know what to say to him because since we're living in the same kind of situation, it always feels like he should be able to deal with it like I do. And when he doesn't, it gets very frustrating for me. And I, a lot of times, say the wrong things. And then even when I don't say the wrong thing... It's still, half the time, I ignore it. So it's it's a very hard situation, just like he does with me. So, <laughs> Well, because, yeah, and that, like she said, I have depression. My depression has actually caused me to fail out of college, at multiple colleges. Um, at one point, though, at those colleges, though, because I enjoy writing, I was studying psychology because I thought maybe I could become a psychiatrist because I like characters and thoughts. I've studied a lot of psychiatry, and I still don't know a lot of time what to say. And I still put my foot in my mouth all the damn time. Um, I am very far from perfect. And that's coming from someone who took a couple of years of psychiatry majoring in psychology. So, And someone who's also gone to therapists for almost his entire childhood. Someone who has been on and off uh, depressive medication his entire life. I am someone who on paper should get what to say. And I don't. And I didn't have a lot of problem with that issue. But what frustrated me the more I thought about it is, is this is not the first time the doctor has screwed up in mental health. Matt Smith's doctor did the exact same thing. When Matt Smith went back, uh, short, I forget the episode number, I even forget the name of the title, but it was right after Rory got sucked into the, uh, the rift from the exploding TARDIS. And it was just the doctor, Matt Smith and Amy, and they went back and they saw Vincent, who, anyone who's Vincent Van Gogh, Knows that you know he was a very troubled man. That's how it's pronounced. Because in America we say Vincent Van Gogh, doesn't mean it wasn't pronounced Vincent Van Gogh. But it bothers me. The point of it is, I'm American. What can I say? That he um, had depression, and the doctor went there, and he was the only person who could see the something fast, Gigrafas, I think. We just watched the episode too recently. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. But Vincent was the only one who could see it. And so the doctor made an offhand comment when they're being ready. They're like, Come on, Vincent, we'll go ahead, get ready. We can go find this thing, um, and then we'll be out of your hair. You won't have to see us again. Yeah. And they were the first people who had actually been nice to Vincent in a while. And for them to just be like, Oh, yeah, we don't actually give a crap about hanging out with you or being a friend. Let's just go take care of this thing, and then we'll be gone. Really upset. To the point where he was in his bed sobbing, and he screamed at the doctor to leave him alone. And the doctor, the worst thing you can do in that situation. For somebody that you know you care about, someone you think you may have upset, the absolute last thing you want to do is run away. I mean, give them space, by all means. Especially if this is someone like a family member. Give them space. But never abandon them. Because it's exactly what had Vincent upset. So the doctor went back to Amy and he said, we should go. He's a very fragile man. We made a mistake. We should go. He didn't mean anything by it. He didn't mean anything by his comment earlier. But they were the wrong things to do. But for the doctor, he's not human. And for Matt Smith, 
People love that episode. I love that episode. Every time they take uh, Vince into the future and they show him the museum, it brings tears to my eyes. Because I think of how much that would mean to me as someone who suffers from very serious depression. So, seeing that, and knowing the doctor screwed up, but still did the best they could to make it better, it's not surprising that Jody's doctor screwed up. Yeah. And then, when you think back to all the doctors, I mean, a lot of people don't like Jody's doctor because she's too sensitive. They're too PC, they're too this, too that. But then the one time that she's not perfect, Mm -hmm. they're jumping all over her. And then my other thing is, the last doctor, Peter Capaldi, he had a carer. So that he didn't have to care. And let's be honest, there were a lot of times where he really could not care less about humans or anybody else. He was only there because of the mystery or because of the aliens and he just wanted to solve it. And he didn't care if anybody died. He didn't care what happened to the humans. He didn't care what happened to anybody. He just... And before we have people... So why are we giving her such a hard time for caring too much and then giving her a hard time for caring too little? Well, and to cut off anyone's complaints, even early on, Capaldi didn't... Because they're all doing me as well. He cared about Clara... But yeah, so but didn't. early on he didn't. Early on he would disappear for like days at a time. He left her in the first episode yeah. with the machines. Yeah. The the cyborg. Uh, and then he and zombies. then even after that he left her behind with Strax and them, and they didn't know if he was coming back or not. So and then but, in other episodes where he would leave her in her life and then she wouldn't see him for weeks at a time and she's like, "You said you were going and getting coffee." And he was, like, gone for, like, weeks. Yeah. So... So he didn't care for a long time. Eventually, yeah, his character had all that character growth and all of that. But you can't fault her doctor or even Chibnall's writing on this one. Because, honestly, they handled it correctly. He wanted to show that there's more than one way to handle these things. And that not everybody is always going to handle them perfectly. Yeah. Because, I mean... We give we've given Chimnall, me personally have given Chimnall a lot of crap, we especially have. lot la, for last series in general. And if you watch our episodes, we complain a lot, like the pating and things like that. Or, I will always come back to the pating. Or we'll complain about the, the past series, episode three with the dregs, or yeah. just in general how he's so heavy-handed in his lessons. Yes, you know, we'll give him crap. We're not. Die, ride or die we're not gonna be all like but everything they do is perfect because it's doctor who it, it really bugged me but though. it bothered both of us that people handled it my other that worry react, is the people reacted to it that way because in the society that we live in let's be honest no one is sensitive to everybody's feelings all the time and no one says everything perfectly all the time look at the internet for christ's sake well so they, I think that's Part of my curiosity of maybe why it's got such a crap comes back to the reason why Jody's been getting crap from the beginning. And that's because she's Jody Whitaker. She's a she. Yeah. And I wonder, is that part of this? Now, you know, you you have to wonder, do they expect her to say the right thing because she's a woman? So she has feelings. Or because, yeah. uh, Expectations. Can she do no right sometimes, it feels like. That too. I just can't. Well, that's what I just said. Yeah. They complain because she cares too much, and then they complain yeah. because she cares too little. But then, don't. And but like, if, she, if it wasn't Jody that was cast, let's say they had gone ahead and cast Benedict Cumberbatch as another uh, very well liked British actor, and in the exact same role, with the exact same writing, pretty much, with pretty much the exact same sort of ambulicious writing and the same issues, but the exact same line, would people have been as angry? About this particular line this or about the whole series? Was, the whole series has been shot with the exact same sort of writing, though. So the same, we had the same issues. We had, we still have the patang, you still have the drag, you still have the, the Would they hold him writing. To such a high standard for this <laughs> line right here, where he doesn't know what to say, he just kind of plays it off a little bit because he's feeling awkward. Would it be such a big issue if it was Benedict doing it instead of Jody? I don't know. And honestly, I wonder. I really do. I didn't think of that. What just bothered me was the fact that. 
a lot of these people complaining probably don't know what to say in these kind of situations. They yeah. probably have had their own full pause, and if you throw it at them, they'll do your whole, I don't need to listen to this rhetoric crap. Strong so, so that that's what's frustrating. Because it's, 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 there was so much backlash just for her being her. And in this moment, I don't know. And I don't know even why there is so much backlash, because... It's not her who... She's not human. The doctor is not human. And even the most human of doctors, like our favorite David Tennant, had those moments where you would, the character would do something, you say, oh my God. Like, how? You know, he stood there and watched as the, uh, man, I'm doing terrible with names right now. Donna's first episode, because it was special. Um, the spider creatures. I don't remember the name. Fuck. I don't, I don't remember it as soon as we're done, which is bugging me. But he sat there as, as they were dying, those little baby eggs. And granted, they had to be taken care of. They would eat the universe. But there was no remorse on his face. As human as he was... Yeah, but people won't feel for them. Like but I'm just saying in general, like, oh, there are other moments where he said, that, that moment where, like, even Matt Smith had it, who's also a very human doctor, where they would lose that humanity. In that moment, something would happen. They become that terrifying. Oh, the sheriff episode. The sheriff episode, or that that terrifying. Where he was like just gonna give the guy over. That terrifying like, being. Just gonna that give you over that, and it'll that. fix everything. He's not human. Yeah. Jody's doctor. And Amy had to be like, "Look, you need to stop. This is what happens when you travel alone." Jody's doctor needs more of these moments. Actually, I actually I would like to have even more dark doctor moments beyond. Just this sort of awkward moment. That's just a little bit of a reminder that she's not human. But she's not. And she didn't know what to say. And it wasn't perfect, but that was the point. And if someone else had done this, really would it have been as angry? And I'm not going to say there aren't people out there who would be like, no. If Ben had come back to that, I'd still be just as mad. I believe the people out there who believe that. But I worry that not everyone believes that. And there's no way to sort of prove that one way or the other. So... It's the internet. Yeah. It's the internet, David. It's cloud town. Just forget. It's the internet, David. So that's our feelings. Um, we don't think it's fair that she got crap over that. Because I think Ryan deserved more crap than know, the dregs. When someone doesn't say the perfect thing no matter the outcome, you would not hold that person responsible and you would not give them a hard time over it. And it's just... Some people still would. But you shouldn't. That's the problem. That is the hugest problem. You know, they have these training sessions for a reason because not everybody knows exactly what to say. And even something that sounds like it's the right thing to say is the worst possible thing you could say. Yeah, I know. And people don't get that. Yeah. Well. Unless we have anything else to add. Nope. We'll go ahead and call it there. Um, It was still a rant. It was not a rant. It was very ranty. No, it wasn't. I'm going to look up the word rant and read you the specifics, and I promise you we did not hit all those points. I am ranting more about the fact that we're not ranting. <laughs> you got pretty ranty there, right? So did I, but we got ranty. That's our rant. If you like our content, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to share with a friend. Don't forget to uh, uh, share on Twitter. Tweet at us. Facebook at us. And regarding mental health and wellness... I mean, even if someone doesn't know the perfect thing to say, at least they're listening. And that's what she did do. She listened. And that's one of the most cared. important things. Yeah. So, if you need ever need any help with mental illness things, please, um, maybe I'll try and include some links in the description or look it up. Because it's not an easy thing to deal with. Nope. And uh, we hope that everyone watching this 
is happy and healthy in all the ways. And if you're not, please get help. Because these are serious things. Despite my antics. Yeah. All right. Have a great day.